If you've gotten a hold of either a pre-built gaming PC or a bunch of components in need of assembly, chances are stuff's gonna need setting up, apart from the obvious. We and many other reputable tech YouTubers have several PC build guides on YouTube. You can find some of them linked in the video description along with Windows installation guides if you are interested. But what exactly comes after that? Well, on paper, you've done the hard work, right? Rigs don't just build themselves, but there are a few things in software that you don't wanna miss. And that's what this video will serve to address. I hope you'll stay with me. Retail Windows keys are expensive. So if you're planning your next PC build, consider checking out our sponsor, VIP SCD Keys. Their Windows 10 and 11 OEM keys sell for a fraction of retail and will unlock the full potential of the OS. They'll also remove those pesky activation watermarks without relying on sketchy third-party software. This month only, you can snag Windows 10 and 11 Home and Pro OEM keys for 30% off using our promo code GSVIP. Simply click the link below corresponding to your version of Windows, click buy now, and pay with a secure payment method like PayPal. At checkout, don't forget our code again, GSVIP, and watch as 30% ripped right off the top, bringing Windows 10 down to 15 bucks and Windows 11 to 21. After your order's been placed, hop on over to the user center and click view key slash codes, and there you go, a genuine OEM Windows key that'll lock to your combination of hardware. Know that you may need to reactivate when swapping things like motherboards by nature of how OEM keys work, but it sure beats the heck out of retail pricing, and most folks aren't swapping motherboards every day. And be sure to stick around till later in the video, we'll show you how to add activate Windows with said key. In the meantime, check out those links below and don't forget our special offer code GSVIP to save 30%. Let's jump into things, shall we? For starters, there are a few things you should configure in your BIOS before ever booting into Windows. One of these pertains to your system memory, likely either DDR4 or DDR5. So with a keyboard connected, power on your rig and either spam or hold the escape or delete key. This will vary from board to board, but you should see a prompt near the bottom of the screen once the vendor splash page pops up telling you how to access it. Once you're there, look for a section labeled DRAM status. So it'll say XMP or DOCP. In this gigabyte board's case, we can stay with an easy mode select XMP disabled and watch as our RAM frequency and timings are automatically configured to the profile predetermined by the manufacturer. So in this case, that's 5200 megahertz with timings, cast latency, and voltage listed just behind. These parameters depend on the memory kit installed in your system and in most cases can improve responsiveness for both gaming and productivity workloads, assuming you don't have anything else holding you back on the motherboard or CPU side. And if for some reason you're running two non-matching kits of either DDR4 or 5, refer to the video linked below titled Mixing RAM for optimal setup. Also note that nothing in the BIOS that we do here in this video will stick unless you've selected save and exit before rebooting. Next on our list is fan speed. By default, most case and cooler fans will run at a higher RPM than necessary, adding both noise and turbulence to your setup. And this can be remedied within the BIOS or within dedicated third-party software like Corsair IQ, NCXT Cam, or others. My preference though is to use the BIOS for this because it's typically a higher level solution, so to speak, and it doesn't require any applications in the background of Windows, a lot of those software suites are frankly kind of trash anyway. In our PC, only a single CP fan header and chassis fan header are occupied, so we'll only need to adjust these two, and we can apply the same fan profile to both if we prefer. For demonstration purposes, we'll stick with the tab labeled CPU fan. So this is gonna control the fan connected to our CPU cooler, and this graph represents the relationship between temperature and fan RPM. Naturally, the hotter things get, right, the faster we'll want our fans to spin in order to dissipate said heat. And our temperature input off to the right is set to the CPU, so everything here temperature-wise is gonna be determined by the temperature of the CPU itself. We'll also leave fan control mode set to auto, although you could specify PWM or DC. If you have a three pin fan, for example, you'll only have voltage control. And under speed control, we can pick from a number of predetermined curves like normal, silent, and full speed, or we can manually set our curve. And this is what I recommend. Select manual, then drag each of the dots in this chart to look something like this. Essentially, what we're after is a very quiet system while it's idling and not being heavily stressed. And we only want the fans to spin especially hard, ergo make a lot of noise, if temperatures approach uncomfortable levels. Anything above roughly 80 degrees Celsius, it depends on the platform, but I would say anything above 80, and your fans should probably be working pretty hard. And of course, if CPU temps hit 90 degrees Celsius, our fans will run at full speed. This should never happen, however, and may be the result of an improperly seated or defective cooler, voltage, or ventilation issue. When you're happy with your curve, save the profile, move on to the next fan, and so on. There may be an option to apply all, which is a useful shortcut if you're comfortable with the same curve being applied to all fans in your system. It's what I typically use. If you're running an AIO, however, and you have a pump connected to a specific header, make sure that you've set it to full speed. Now, some will swear by, say, variable speed, but I prefer running Asetek-style pumps at 
at full speed regardless, they operate very quietly, and varying their RPMs can potentially shorten lifespan. The last thing to set up in the BIOS before fully booting into Windows is boot drive order. Swing over to the boot tab and look specifically under the boot option priorities header. Again, this might be called something else depending on the board you've chosen. This list is hierarchical, meaning that your PC will attempt to boot into the highest drive first. And while normally folks only have a single boot drive attached, systems with multiple boot drives can boot into the wrong partition by accident. So to ensure this never happens, arrange this list such that the desired drive is located at the very top. In our case, the target drive is our Kyoxia M.2. Click enter while hovering over the first drive in the list, select the target, and then click enter again. Voila, we're good to go. Navigate to the save and exit tab, select save and exit, obviously, and allow the system to reboot. After a few seconds to minutes, you should have loaded into Windows. This may be your first time here, maybe not. And first things first, we need an internet driver. Whether you're using wired or wireless LAN, it's likely that your PC won't be able to connect to the internet without one. This is especially the case if you're using a wireless one. So to obtain one, you'll need a second device capable of accessing the internet. This can be a bit annoying, I understand. So either a laptop or another desktop, a tablet, or even a phone should do. From any of these devices, navigate to your motherboard vendor's website. So in a browser, I'm going to type in Gigabyte Z790 Aorus Master and click this link here. Of course, replace the name of the board that I used with yours, unless you have the exact same one as me. Next, we'll click Support, and then scroll down to the LAN and WLAN driver tabs. You don't want to download the one that you prefer. You may even want both just to keep things simple. Then transfer these to your target PC, either a flash drive or a data cable, unzip, install, and reboot, and all should be well on the internet front. Now, I recommend the internet driver first and foremost before even graphics drivers, because once you've taken care of internet on the new machine, you can then use said machine for all other driver downloads. This would also be a great time to activate the OS if you haven't already. Hold on, Greg. What are you talking about? Well, before long, you'll notice a pesky activation watermark pop up. So you can use this operating system for free with limitations. And if you'd like those removed, you can snag a key from our sponsor, VIP SCD key. Once obtained, navigate to the activation tab within Windows settings. You can get there quickly by typing activate in your search tab and clicking enter. From here, click change or add product key, paste your code, allow Windows to run its checks, and then click activate. Give it a minute. You should notice that watermark disappear along with a message that Windows has been successfully activated if every Everything goes as planned. VIP SCD key special sale is happening now and for a limited time, so be sure to snag a key or two before it's too late. And be sure to use my special offer code again, GSVIP, for a sweet discount on a variety of options, including Windows 10, Windows 11, and more. The last step during the setup process should be graphics drivers. Search your system's graphics card in your browser of choice with the prompt, something along the lines of RTX 2060 drivers, replacing my GP with yours, of course. If it's an NVIDIA card, you'll likely land here, where you can then download download and install the latest applicable GeForce driver along with GeForce Experience if you prefer. In AMD's case, you can use the auto detect utility or manually search for your card and install much the same way. Intel's is also much the same way. If you're running only integrated graphics, you'll probably need to navigate back to your motherboard vendors page and select the VGA tab instead of LAN or WLAN this time. You may notice your screen flicker a few times during the installation process, which is perfectly normal. And after a healthy restart, be sure to adjust your monitor's resolution and refresh rate to refresh reflect its capabilities and test out a few games to make sure that all is well. Without installing the latest graphics drivers, you may notice infrequent crashes, game lockouts, or at the very least, a reduction in FPS on account of the more basic display driver Windows often throws up in its place. Overriding this with the current spec from Nvidia, AMD, or Intel will ensure that your GP runs at its maximum potential. And that's about all for this one. Hopefully you found these five tips helpful, six if you're counting the Windows activation step. I'm aware that these are merely refreshers for the bulk of our audience, but we're always welcoming folks to the PC gaming community, especially this time of year. And I'm sure glad I had videos like these back in my day when I got into the scene. That was several years ago. I I'm not that old, I promise. Again, be sure to check out relevant links in the video description. Consider liking and subscribing if you haven't already and sticking around for the next one. My name is Greg. Happy holidays, folks. And thanks for learning with me.